sports supplements. What does the evidence really tell us about what is both safe and effective? And do you even need supplements? When and why and where can you find the best products? I'm about to tell you. This is Inc. Nutrition. My name is Jack, Registered Dietitian. If you haven't been on this channel, welcome. We help translate the science of nutrition to help you improve your health and performance. So we're doing this sports nutrition series at the moment, and this is week five where we're gonna go over supplements. It's a very hot topic. It's always been a hot topic, and athletes always wanna know how to get an edge in their competition. So let's really get into the science and figure out what you should spend your money on, if you should spend your money on supplements at all. Just a quick disclaimer before we get going here. Uh, everything I'm about to tell you about supplements is just for general informational purposes only. If you wanna take a supplement, always consult with a healthcare provider first. So I have to start off by saying, I'm a big believer in following a food first philosophy, all right? If you follow a balanced diet without avoiding any major food groups, you are completely capable of achieving optimal health and performance without the need of supplements. However, there are some circumstances in which you may benefit from taking safe and effective supplements from re reliable sources. So let's define dietary supplement, okay? This can be defined as a food, nutrient, or non-food compound that is purposefully ingested uh, with the aim of achieving a specific health and or performance benefit. So it's important to know that there are several types of supplements and just different reasons for using them. So let's just briefly go over those. So first we have supplements that are designed to prevent or treat nutrient deficiencies. Okay, think about you know your daily vitamin, right? Multivitamins, those, those kinds of things. Um, also, if you have a you know vitamin D deficiency or iron or calcium or B12, the most common ones in the US, taking supplements for that reason uh, would fall in this category. And just keep in mind, it's always important to have your nutrient status assessed before supplementing with vitamins and minerals. Now, there may be a, a few exceptions there, but we can get into that. Next, we have practical form of energy and nutrients. So this is really common in the sports world. Functional sports foods, such as sports drinks, energy drinks, energy chews and gels, electrolyte tablets, protein powder even, even nutritional bars. All right, these are all technically supplements. And then we have the category that a lot of athletes are very interested in, you know, things that could possibly directly improve athletic performance. Now there's, there's so many on the market and it's really important to be very skeptical when you are searching for products um, you know, that you want that are targeted at improving strength or endurance or recovery, you name it. And the reality is there are just a select few that have enough evidence to support um, their efficacy, you know, behind uh, improving performance. And you can see here, right, this is based on the Australian Institute of Sport, uh, which puts out a really good report. On, on supplements and so caffeine, nitrate, creatine, beta alanine and bicarbonate are really the only ones that have enough evidence to support performance. And I'll, I'll talk about, uh, a, highlight a few of those in a minute. And then anything else really that you see uh, on this list, there's just not enough there at this time to really uh, recommend, all right? So save your money on, on really everything else. And then you have uh, supplements that can indirectly improve performance, all right? So things that improve immune health or recovery or muscle soreness or even sleep. Things like vitamin D, probiotics, uh, fiber, zinc, omega-3, uh, curcumin, you know, or turmeric, collagen, tart cherry juice. There, if, if some of those supplements, you know, improve your sleep quality, that may in turn improve your performance. So there's an indirect effect there. And then finally, we have supplements that may improve stress and well-being, right? So a lot of the time, these are herbs, okay? And there is a lot of potential here, but you have to be very careful on where you source um, and definitely consult with a health professional before taking. But there are so many forms as well, you know, like infusion coming from a tea or powder or ointment or capsules or tinctures. So that's a whole nother road that we're not gonna dive into uh, today. But of course, that is a whole nother category of supplements. So we're really just gonna dive into ergogenic aids, 
which are those supplements that can potentially directly improve performance. I'm gonna highlight the three big ones uh, that have a lot of evidence uh, behind them. Okay, so first up we have caffeine. Caffeine has probably been studied more than any other supplement um, with its potential to improve strength and endurance. And it, you know, mechanism of action revolves around it being a central nervous system stimulant. It can also reduce your perceived exertion, okay, which can be very beneficial, with, especially with endurance activity. Now, typical dose is around 100 to 200 milligrams, 60 minutes before activity. Now, this is going to be, of course, dependent on everyone and their tolerance uh, and many other factors, but benefits are pretty good all right there there's there's quite a bit of literature that can support its use for improved endurance and increased power output however there are also some risks if you take too much um you know it can lead to anxiety insomnia there's also dependency like most substances that come with it so keep those in mind now of course caffeine can be found in a lot of different products you know from even bars to chews to energy drinks all right so many beverages now are adding caffeine i tend to recommend you know getting your caffeine from more of a natural source like coffee or tea but you have to keep in mind that there can be a diuretic effect with that so you don't want to have too much right before activity uh, but find out what really works best for you if you want to use it next up we have creatine so a lot of you have probably heard of creatine and it has also been really well studied just like caffeine and there's a lot of potential here um, you know, the mechanism of action involves both increasing and enhancing muscle creatine stores in addition to the rate of phosphocreatine resynthesis. Okay, typical dose, about three to five grams a day. I would recommend taking it 30 minutes before. And really, it's designed and it's best used um, with explosive activity, anaerobic activity, strength-based activity. Uh, if you're an endurance athlete and you don't do a whole lot of weight training, I personally don't think it is necessary. Uh, but a lot of the studies have shown that if taken appropriately, it can increase both power and strength. Now, there are some risks that you can have an increase in body weight. Um, it can also possibly lead to dehydration if you're not adequately hydrated while taking it. But for the most part, it's pretty safe. So the last one I'll highlight is beetroot. I really love beetroot powder. It's received a lot of attention in recent years, I think also for good reason. So what are the benefits here? Well, beets naturally contain a lot of nitrate and when consumed in the body that gets converted to nitrite, which then gets converted to nitric oxide. And then nitric oxide has this vasodilation effect in the within the blood vessels so pretty much your blood vessels will expand in diameter and then that allows more oxygen to be delivered to the muscles if you have more oxygen in the muscles you should be able to perform longer and harder especially with endurance activity so that that's the main benefit there's also some positive effects associated with uh, the mitochondria uh, and muscle fatigue as well but that's that's the the primary mechanism now if you want to try it uh, there's two routes you can go you can either have 8 to 16 ounces of 100% beetroot juice uh, before activity but take that at least an hour ahead of time because it will take that long for the the nitrate to get converted to nitric oxide now a more practical recommendation would be to take a beetroot powder uh, there's a few brands out there but that is gonna hit you quicker and you're not gonna have to take in as much liquid so you can just add a scoop of that to your your water 30 minutes before uh, so it's something to for sure try if you want to try to improve your endurance and you want to do it in a natural safe way then give this a shot i will say that it has you know just like anything else this um the possibility of building up a tolerance so the more you have it maybe the less effective it will be so you just gotta be a little bit selective when you want to really focus on improving endurance um, the only risks there could be some gi upset if you have too much of the juice you know before activity and then you also may have some pink or orange urine you may have noticed this in the past if you eat a lot of beets then uh, the same thing happens but it's completely harmless so we, yeah, when it comes to supplements that you know claim to improve 
performance related to strength or endurance or you name it there's really not a lot out there that are actually effective so those are the big three there are a couple others but um, those are the ones that i like to highlight so be very critical in terms of uh purchasing supplements you know you got to be skeptical okay uh, now there are some additional supplements and i'll just highlight a few that can in indirectly right improve performance so i'll show you those here for recovery okay um protein powder can be very effective if you're not meeting your protein needs throughout the day uh, curcumin which is the active compound in turmeric all right that has a very positive effect effect with reducing inflammation omega-3 fatty acids okay i think i really kind of recommend this across the board also has uh, a powerful anti-inflammatory um, effect which can drastically improve uh, recovery also immunity so leading to immunity all right vitamin d amazing um, probiotics we're still learning a lot about probiotic supplementation but it's promising there's not really enough out there for me to make a solid recommendation on which ones but it, it's coming zinc as well easy to overdo it on zinc when it comes to supplements so you got to be careful there with sleep tart cherry juice contains a lot of tryptophan which um, can be converted to melatonin in the body so that can be pretty effective actually if you want to try having eight ounces of 100 percent tart cherry juice before bed chamomile teal uh, sorry chamomile tea okay has a really nice well-studied calming effect in the body so one cup of that could be helpful melatonin a lot of controversy over melatonin be careful with this it can be effective if taken in the right amounts but you definitely do not want to overdo it so please again all of these are just this is just general information i'm not telling you to take any of this um, if you do want to take something here that i've listed and you're curious about it um, you know schedule a consultation or talk to your healthcare provider to see if it's the right fit for you so lastly i'm going to go over just this kind of supplement checklist okay if you are interested in buying something and you have consulted with your healthcare provider or professional also go over this checklist okay so first step is to ask yourself do i need to supplement could my physical or mental health benefit next is the supplement safe so supplements are not fda approved it's really important to know that so you are ultimately responsible for what you consume now if you're an athlete especially if you participate in like a um you know organization like the ncaa then you want to keep an eye out for third party uh, tested products so nsf certified for sport informed choice those are kind of the big ones to look at like things like protein powder okay if you're gonna if you're gonna use that really look for these logos and you can actually go on the websites too to see what products that they have certified number three is to ask is the product free of controversial ingredients allergens or additives so if you see things like proprietary blends artificial sweeteners you know and then all of these like hydrogenated oils titanium dioxide uh, you know over time not great for the body so be careful with that definitely be careful with pre-workout supplements too because they are notorious for containing banned substances and then if something sounds too good to be true it probably is so look for these red flag terms okay fda approved usda approved again that that doesn't exist with supplements so if you see that that's a problem if it's marketing weight loss um or it says it's it has this anabolic effect or a stimulant effect careful with those for sure increased muscle mass testosterone booster anything that has to do with hormones really you got to be uh just mindful of quick fix right backed by science fat burner claims to treat or prevent a disease number five is the supplement effective so we went through several today uh, but you have to be your own critical consumer of information so is there enough evidence all right uh, check out the australian institute of, uh, of sport if you want to know more about some of those sports supplements how is the company's reputation this is the last thing to really check out because there is for sure a difference in the quality so is there someone knowledgeable on their staff are there clinical trials done on the product that's a big bonus what affiliations do the company have they specify how they test for purity you know has the company been acquired by a large company right that's something you got to be careful of because there's 
a lot of funding that can um, support something that may not be great or effective. Has the company ever been in trouble with the FDA? Okay, so the that is um, a good list, you know, to, to consider before buying really any supplement. All right, I, I hope it was helpful for you to go over all of this. I know it can be a tricky territory, all right, and I, and I want you to always put something in your body that won't harm you, number one, um, and that can, you know, potentially benefit you, you as an individual, all right? So thank you very much for watching. And if you have questions about any of this, drop it in the comment below. I'll, I'll clarify something if you need that. And if you have questions about anything in the world of nutrition, I will get around to it and I'll maybe make a video about it if you drop it in the comments. So please like, subscribe, follow us for new videos every Wednesday. Again, my name is Jack. Uh, we are Inc. Nutrition. We really pride ourselves on providing evidence-based nutrition education. So I, I just want credible information to be available for everyone at the end of the day. Next week, we're going to wrap up this sports nutrition series. We're going to get into our last video, which will go over how to maximize fuel on a budget. Okay, so we'll get into into some practical recommendations for meal ideas, snack ideas, meal planning, grocery shopping, all the things. I think it's going to be a good one. So um, thank you again for watching and I'll see you then. Bye. If it sounds too good to be true, it likely is. Honestly, just save your money and eat a bunch of fruits and vegetables. You are responsible for what you put in your body. Now let's define a dietary diet. Di <laughs> now let's define a dietary supplement. I do love tart cherry juice. <laughs> ah! <laughs>